What's a made-up fact that sounds real? Lifesavers candy was invented to help prevent choking deaths. The idea behind them was that, if the candy should become lodged in the throat, there would still be a small hole in the center for air to pass through. They were literally life-saving. Lifesavers were put on the market only three months after the Titanic sank. This is the better one, since it references what most people recognize as the actual origin of the name. And it's totally plausible that a candy company in 1911 would be callous enough to capitalize on a tragedy. Vitamins is actually a portmanteau of the words vital minerals. First one on this thread that I believed before realizing what this thread was. Same. I legit just read the title, understood it then instantly thought this was real. Monocles with two lenses are called bionicles. Fun fact, it first had three lenses because it kept breaking and was called trickles. But then the glasses got stronger and they didn't need three. They reduced it to two and then one. That's also where the phrase trickle down comes from. It trickled down to monocles. NERF is an acronym for non-expanding recreational foam. I'd honestly believe this if it wasn't in this thread. I believed it until someone in a different thread mentioned it wasn't real. No one cited sources on either side and I was too lazy to investigate, so it still could be real, but likely isn't. People often ask whether NERF was the name that we chose for the wider range of foam products. The answer is no. Our in-house working name while we were developing the product ideas made reference to addendums to enhance a woman's presence. We called it Falsy Ball. It was after our line of foam products hit the market under the name NERF that we learned where the name came from. One of the people involved in promoting the line suggested naming it after the foam padded roll bars on Jeeps, which off-roaders had dubbed NERF bars. The name stuck. Tetris was inspired by a carpet shortage in the Soviet Union. People could only get carpeting scraps that were cut out for where cabinets, closets, ECT were. Because of this, people had to figure out how to cover a floor with those scraps. A worker then had the idea to make a game out of it. The pieces were inspired by common shapes of those carpet scraps. This is cracking, I know this is not true but I'd happily accept it. 10 tenths. Oh I read the post title wrong. I thought it was, what's a real fact that sounds made up, and I've been scrolling down like, yep, didn't know that. Huh that's interesting, oh wow, oh damn that's really cool as well. What's your real name, kid? Fogel. F*** it. We're calling you Soviet Tetris Carpet Squares. United States postal workers technically have the authority to pull over and ticket motorists for speeding. If a cop car, an ambulance, fire truck and postal van pulled up at a stop sign at exactly the same time the postal van would have first right of way. Is this the place for Postmaster General facts? Yes it is. The Postmaster General is 19th in the line of presidential succession, and therefore the highest ranking general in the United States, the Surgeon General is 20th in line and therefore the second highest ranking general. The Postmaster General is the only member of the executive branch who can neither be fired by the President nor impeached by Congress. Only the Supreme Court, in a process known as judicial discharge, can remove the Postmaster General from his slasher office. The Postmaster General is still provided by Congress with $40 a year for the purchase of beeswax and turpentine in order to waterproof, haversacks, frocks, coats, and clothing divers. Benjamin Franklin, the first Postmaster General, was posthumously awarded the title Postmaster General Emeritus by Congress in 1976 and recognized as a six-star general along with generals of the armies George Washington, Douglas MacArthur, and John Pershing, also all posthumously honored. You can catch a cold from being cold. Edit. I'm getting way too many responses to respond to them all. Colds are caused by viruses. Can cold weather compromise your immune system making you more susceptible? Under extreme conditions, yes. You still have to come in contact with the virus. There is not random virus floating out in the air. You have to be in the room with a sick person to get it through the air. It can also last on surfaces for several hours. Going for a run in cold weather will not make you sick if you come home to an empty house where no one has been sick. My parents still think this. Also that if you sit or sleep near a draft, like from an open window, you'll get a neck ache. Somehow. In 1976 the heads of the six leading manufacturers of microwaves, Tappan, Philips, Hitachi, Tricity, Toshiba, and Panasonic met to steal the patent for the rotating plate inside the microwave. They agreed to not pay the patent holder royalties and held that it would return to the exact same spot at the 60-second mark. They met in a secret conference on Jekyll Island, Georgia. If everyone agreed then no manufacturer would have the upper hand. True fact. The heads of the leading manufacturers of light bulbs met and decided not to increase the longevity of the light bulb any longer. Dinosaurs had big ears, but everyone forgot this because dinosaur ears don't have bones. It's a rock fact. Potatoes and molasses. Each year, sharks kill more people than toasters. That one's true though. 
Sharks don't kill any toasters. How can we be sure? Cause if the it fights back, the shark would be toast. The reason why the police are sometimes called cops is because their badges used to be made out of copper. Wait a second, I thought this was actually true. No, cop actually comes from copper, which is English slang. Basically, a copper is someone who seizes things by force. Norwegian warships don't have numbers painted on their bows. Instead they have barcodes printed on them. That way when they get back to port they can Scandinavian. This is the most underrated thing I have read. I love you. Thank you for my new second favorite joke of all time. You have changed my life for the better. Tell us your first. I bought a pair of shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them with but I've been tripping all day. And tied with that is, what's the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? I didn't pay $20 last weekend to have a garbanzo bean on my face. My two favorite jokes. A group of frogs is called a frugality. This one is true. My friend in WoW Club told me. Your WoW friend was wrong. Sorry. A group of frogs is commonly called an army. Although a larger group can also be called a colony, a group of frogs of the same age range a cohort, and a group of calling males a chorus. A group of toads on the other hand is commonly referred to as a knot. Source, Google and PetEducate.com. You're wrong. Sorry. A group of frogs is commonly called a freg. Although a larger group can also be called a frug, a group of frogs of the same age range a frag, and a group of calling males a frug. A group of toads on the other hand is commonly referred to as a load of toad. Source, my imagination. The holes in bread are called minchin holes after a place in Wales, UK which has a rock formation with many holes where the rocks are the color of fresh bread. If you fall into a tub of bread, you'll be fine unless you're in France. Because then you'll be in a lot of pain. That there's a gender pay gap. Well, there is. It's just not for the sexist reasons that people are claiming. Men and women have different interests, preference on work schedules, and life and death risk appetite. Also, women can get pregnant and have babies. Majority of them prioritize motherhood over a career. Men tend to work longer hours. Men tend be more interested in science and math while women prefer social interactions. Men working on oil rigs, fishing and other labor extensive jobs risk their lives more than a desk job. The 87 cents to a dollar argument is plain wrong and displays one of the ways statistics can be abused to misrepresent reality to fit their narrative. It never took into consideration, job, title, work hours and years of experience. It's a great narrative to victimize themselves but it's simply untrue. Do you know why we got QWRTY Shoals and Glidden and Remington Arms Manufacturing is is why? Remington believe it or not made more than guns and during the old west. Shocker, ready yourself. Guns, actually weren't as common or popular as people think and I will get to that. Remington was trying to diversify their market and so they got with Shoals and Gideon to create a typewriter and shows and Gideon came up with the layout for the typewriter which is QWERTY there's a myth that it's because you can type typewriter on the top line as a sales pitch though you can write typewriter with the first line however it was designed so it creates most ergonomic form of typing in English. Remington was also good at making things cheap and they had good marketing and so QWERTY was adopted to be the official typist layout though many people tend to disagree with layout preferring a typical ABCD or other odd and eccentric keyboard layouts this overall seemed to work the best. Well today Remington is really make typewriters they also have a long history of making homewares such as pots plans plates watches and other things this was before the era that we know of where we just sell the brand to a foreign company to make parts cheap. The QWERTY arrangement of keys was that it allowed for the most rapid typing on ya old typewriters. Keys arranged differently generally had a chance of the hammer arms colliding more frequently. It is a vestigal convention born from mechanical limitations of your. Supposedly Dvorak is optimized for human WPM speed. Hard to say, I only use QWERTY, 